Welcome back once again, Multi Battle Conference. We are here uh, again with another interview. Uh, we are we're talking about the Ally Switch Spammers team today. Uh, they are one of our another one of our returning teams, um, one of our top four teams actually from last season. And we have Gumi on the line to uh, to talk about this team with us. Go ahead and say hi, Gumi. Hello. All right, so. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go through the draft real quick and then have Gumi talk about their team a little bit. Uh, they started off with the Reggie Alecki as their first pick, going double S tier with the Cinderace after that. Uh, completing a Firewater Grass Core very early with the Tangla and Azumarill. Uh, completing a Trick Room mode after that with the Kaparaj and Musharna. Uh, their final B tier pick is going to be that Haxorus. Uh, they they uh, got Kangaskhan out of C tier and rounding off their draft with a couple of D tiers in uh, Drizzile and the Growlithe. Uh, so Gumi, go ahead and tell us about this team. Yeah, I'm a, I am pretty proud of this team. I think it's good. I think it's really versatile. Um, one of the things I do really like about this team is just I feel like almost every single Mon we have has more than one role that they can fulfill. And it's not always incredibly obvious what that role is, um, but we have plans for a lot of these mods that I feel is incredibly, makes them incredibly versatile. So I am really excited about this team. One thing that I like on my draft is just a lot of options, whether it be a lot of speed control. Um, I, I love redirection now after, especially after last season. Um, fake out with Kingish Gun is incredible. So I do think that this team has a lot of potential um, Cinderace and Regielki are both crazy mons. I love them. I think that they really are the backbone to this team. Um, and then we loved Musharna last season. We loved Tingle last season. So uh, we decided to bring them back in. And, uh, and yeah, even our lower tier picks like Growlithe has Intimidate if we ever think that's necessary. Um, and Drizzle has some cool things up its sleeve as well. Um, so yeah, I think we have a hard hitting team and I think we also have a, a pretty versatile one. Absolutely, yeah. You guys have a ton of good pieces, and uh, some that you're you're very very familiar with uh, from last season as well. So, um, it uh, looks like a good team so far. Let's uh, let's go into our grades here and see see how you did uh, on your draft uh, for for how you your your performance during the drafting process. Uh, we gave you a B plus. Uh, starting up here with the Reggie Alecki as your first pick. Um, this was uh, it's it's a little bit odd that we the we we're giving you a good grade here uh, with with a B plus, but at the same time, uh, your first pick is is kind of one of the things uh, that's that's holding this back from from uh, uh, jumping up to that A or A minus range. Um, we're a little bit uh, we're we're not we're not exactly skeptical of of Reggie Alecki so much on this draft, but we are definitely skeptical of it uh, as a first pick. Um, it, it seems like something, uh, that you would want to pair with another offensive S tier, which you did, um, but it seems like something that you would want to get as your, your second S tier if you're, if you want to get it, uh, at all. Um, you know, it, it you, you probably want to go more for the, uh, the big offensive threat first and then get the Reggie Lecky, uh, maybe more, more as support, even though it's not, it's not just support, but, uh. That's uh, one of the, one of the big things it it can do. I think, um, especially next to the Cinderace, a, a super fast Electra web is going to be really helpful against it or next to it. But uh, so it it can definitely be good, and I think you got a good mode with it. And I do like the Cinderace as the second pick there. If you have Reggie Lucky as your first, uh, it just seemed kind of weird to go with that as your first, especially because your your first S tier uh, is also. Uh, I, I feel a little, a little bit weird about having uh, such a high tier pick that's uh, just completely shut down by uh, by just a single ability. You know, if you're going against a, a lightning rod user, uh, Reggie Alecki is is virtually useless because it's uh, you know all it can do at that point is uh, it can electro web the thing next to the lightning rod user uh, and it can set up screens. You know, which is uh, you don't want your S tier to just be just be limited to that, right? Um, so that was, it was a little bit weird for us, but we do like that you followed it up with, with a Cinderace. We think that's a good combo. Uh, the Tangela is, is kind of a pro and kind of a con, uh, on, on your draft. Um, we do like the early redirection pick, um, 
it's it's something that we're giving bonus points to for any team that that picked redirection early, uh, especially dipping down into that B tier before you even uh, picked your A tier. Um, the the only weird thing here is that uh, even though it's a grass type and you're clearly going for a firewater grass core here up up kind of near the top, but the only weird thing is that uh, generally we like to see. Uh, follow me users picked before rage powder or at least alongside rage powder users um and there were a lot of uh really good follow me pokemon still available uh mr mime was still on the board uh togetic got picked the same round but much later in the round so it was still available um even the uh uh electabuzz electivire magmar magmortar I, I think all of those were still on the board um so we like the early redirection pick uh we don't like that you decided to go for Rage Powder over Follow Me, though. So kind of a double-edged sword there. Uh, however, we really like the direction of the draft after that. We uh, the, the Azumarill pick is perfect here because it kind of starts this, this Trick Room mode that you're going for the next couple picks, and it finishes off your Firewater Grass Core with a very solid water type. Uh, so we like that a lot. Um, the Kaparaja and the Musharna after that... Um, we, we like that you went for a trick room mode a little bit earlier than some other teams did. Um, and because of that, you got the Kaparaja, uh, the, the regular Kaparaja form instead of the G-Max one that we got. I think everybody, uh, would prefer to get the regular one if they had their choice. Um, and you guys picked early enough to, to snatch that up. Um, and we, we also like this, this, uh, this might feel like kind of a small point, but I, I don't, I don't actually think it's, it's quite so small you picked your main trick room sweeper in Kaparaja before your trick room setter yes. and i think that's a big deal um that's also something that that i think we saw doesn't click do they picked the escavalier yeah. before the aromatisse um which i i think is uh is very smart considering which which pokemon were going faster there were lots and lots of trick room setters still on the board uh, and not a lot of, and the, the trick room sweepers seem to be going, uh, quite a bit faster. So I really like that, uh, that you made that pick first. That's something that we did as well. We picked our G-Max Kaparaja before we picked up our, our Kanto Slowbro. Um, that's something we, we kind of knocked, uh, uh, Jared and the Rainbow Raiders on, uh, because they, they really wanted the G-Max Kaparaja. They ended up picking Galarian Slowking first and lost out on that trick room setter, uh, or lost out on that trick room sweeper when uh, they could have had a bunch of backup uh, trick room setters, even if that Gal uh, Galarian Slow King got sniped. So um, it's uh, it, it it I think on the surface it might seem like not such a big deal, but uh, it's it's pretty significant I, I think it because it's uh, it 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 messed it messed up the Raiders trick room mode pretty bad. Yeah. It messed up a lot because like. One of the things that people don't understand is that there's a lot of Trick Room Sweepers in B tier, which is where the Copperaja was. I believe the Scavalier was in there. Yeah. Um, and in B tier, they're 30 points. But there is such a gigantic gap between the very high tier Trick Room Sweepers and the other ones. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that made it a v very smart to just go in right away and grab one of the better ones right away. Because... The, even though they were all in the same tier and they all did the same thing, the the cream of the crop really distanced themselves from some of the other ones, like the Escavalier, like the Acaparaja. Um, I'm surprised uh, Pink Urchin didn't go, but I also mm -hmm. thought that was one of the high tier ones because of its very low speed stat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like they there there was just a very wide you know schism between like stuff like a. Who did uh, the Rainbow Raiders end up picking up? Berserker. Berserker. Yeah, like the difference between G Max Copperaja and Berserker is massive. Yeah, and they're worth mm -hmm. the same amount of points, essentially. Right. So, yeah. So uh, that that's that's seemingly kind of a small thing that that bumped your your drafting grade up uh, a significant amount. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we also definitely really like the Haxorus pick. It's it's a really offensive powerhouse. It's, I'm fr frankly, I'm surprised it lasted until round seven mm -hmm. uh, because it's a, a fairly high value B tier. Uh, I, we, I believe the league voted on uh, where to put this thing. I actually voted for this thing to be an A tier. So yeah. um, any, anything that's 
that you can make a reasonable case for actually being in the tier above the one it's actually in, that's probably pretty high value for its tier. Um, so uh, picking that up, uh, especially in round seven, noticing that it's still it's actually still there, which kind of is surprising. Uh, picking that up was was definitely a, a good decision. And then uh, Kangaskhan is is a really interesting C tier pick mm -hmm. um, because. Uh, I've said this a bunch of times, C tier is full of, uh, of a lot of trash that you kind of have to sift through to find the good uh, the, the good high value Pokemon in the tier. Kangaskhan is in a weird spot where I don't think it does a whole lot of stuff particularly well, but uh, now that Megalopony is gone, Kangaskhan is the only scrappy fake out in the game. And it's... It's not a Pokemon that's going to be doing a whole lot of stuff after Fake Out, but it's something that is going to force uh, certain teams with, with ghost types they might rely on for setting things up to really uh, think about exactly what they're doing and, and kind of question their usual modes. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you have like a ghost type that's, uh, that you want to set up Trick Room, uh, Kangaskhan is going to make that more difficult because usually that thing doesn't have to worry about getting faked out, so that doesn't really need to be a factor in their game plan. So it's going to kind of throw a wrench in their usual modes. The same thing can be said for the jurors who are uh, running Driftblim, who is, which is normally an ex extremely uh, reliable Tailwind setter because of how fast it is with, uh, with Unburden, but uh, Kangaskhan can throw a wrench in that plan. So it's, it, it makes the matchup a little more awkward for your opponents just by having that threat of, of scrappy fake out there, especially since, uh, since you don't have another fake out user on the draft. So just, just having that fake out, uh, that fake out pressure there, uh, during prep is, is good as well, whether it's scrappy or not, the scrappy just adds an extra little bonus for, uh, for certain matchups, um, that kind of, like I said, throws a wrench in their plan. So it's, uh, if I, I don't, I don't know if, uh, if there was any other C tier stuff you were looking at, but I think in, in round eight, when a lot of the other C tier stuff, uh, is, is gone, I think it's still a decent choice, uh, just for, for that, that added, uh, that added pressure. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, uh, pretty, pretty good draft. A couple of, uh, a couple of questionable decisions we thought, but, uh, a lot of really good decisions as well. So we gave you a B plus there. Uh, for Synergy, we gave you a B-plus as well. Your Firewater Grass Core is really the uh, the highlight of this team here with the Cinderace, the, the Cinderace, the Tangela, the Azumarill. And then, obviously, we see the Regieleki, the Electric-type, being paired with it, as you usually see with these Firewater Grass Cores. Um, the Regieleki, I believe, supports this team pretty well, particularly the Cinderace and the Haxorus. Um, I really, really like uh, the Haxorus next to the Regieleki in particular because I believe with a... I believe that Haxorus' main fault has always been that it's like maybe five or six points too slow. Um, it's, it has a 97 base speed. It just barely gets outsped by key things like Salamence, Garchomp, you know, all the base hundreds, basically. Uh, so I think having Regieleki next to it where you could just start firing off Electrowebs and take advantage of its massive 147 attack stat. You could even run this thing adamant if you want. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's now, you know, you don't have to worry about the speed so much. And I think that's really, really going to help you. I, I, I almost want to, I look forward more to that more than the Cinderace because Haxorus gets access to like uh, Iron Tail and uh, Stomping Tantrum. So you can uh, start launching um, Max Steel Spikes and Max uh, Quakes to start building up your defenses. And then it can really start to get bulky. Um, it has amazing coverage. I think it's access to, like close combat now and stuff like that. Uh, so I think overall, I think that Haxorus is uh, can can be dangerous next to this Regieleki. It's something that's not really looked at often. Then you have the the Trick Room mode entirely that I think synergizes really well together. The, the Musharna, Copperaja, and the Azumarill. Um, I I I think Musharna is and you guys had it last season it's a really underrated pokemon as far as like being able to set trick room up uh and uh support outside of trick room as well uh we use a gravity hypnosis set a lot i know you guys were a little bit more partial to like the calm mind stuff which is also good um but uh, i think musharna in general can be uh can be really good and copperaja obviously is is a, a really really um good uh, trick room sweeper especially for the tier probably one of the best if not the best right next to like a scavalier and stuff like that um so i i think 
overall, a lot of your Pokemon uh, work really well together. Uh, you, you're able to fill out the Firewater Grass Core. You're able to fill out the Fantasy Core with the Azumarill, the Copperage, or the Haxorus. Um, you know, I think so many people put... Uh, after, our, like, our last videos everybody was trying to put these type cores together and just like oh if we just put a type core together then that'll get us the highest synergy grade it's like no these pokemon have to actually work together they have to have more than just you know oh they're fire water uh grass and or dragon steel fairy like no they have to be good and you guys did a good combination of that i feel a lot of these pokemon work well together they're high they're high value picks that are going to consistently see uh, usage on your week, uh, your games week to week. You don't just have a D tier down here that happens to have a fairy type, and you're like, look, see, it fills out the other stuff. Like, no, yeah. you, <laughs> you, 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 you guys actually filled it out in a good way, and then you, you were like, hey, we don't need the the dark and fighting types to to fill it out. We got a psychic type, but whatever, it's not that big of a deal. Like, yeah, you don't need every single. Yeah, we don't type, need yeah. every single type. We just. Get a couple of really good ones and, and ride those out. As long as the, the Pokemon are working together, and I feel that they are here. So overall, we, uh, for that, we gave you a B plus. Uh, threat level. This is uh, this is the highest grade that we gave your draft. Uh, we we were particularly impressed by your threat level. We gave you an A. Uh, this is the second highest uh, grade we've given out. We've we've given one one A plus to the sadistic seniors. Um, but uh, virtually everything on on this uh, this draft is is very very threatening. At least all of the the stuff that's uh, usable. I mean, the the we could argue about whether or not whether or not the D tiers are going to hit the field. But uh, everything one through eight has some kind of serious threat to it. Uh, the Regieleki is obviously just gonna it's gonna outspeed everything. It has really big damage with that transistor ability. Um, it uh, it's it's able to be very disruptive um, with just super fast screens and and electro web. Um, it's if if you don't if you don't think of Regieleki as as threatening, uh, you're you either don't know what you're talking about or you have a lightning rod Pokemon on your team. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Cinderace, I don't think I need to explain why that thing's threatening. It's uh, it it hits the field. It, you you slap a life orb on it and it just it just blows shit up. It's great. Uh, Tangela is, uh, it's, it's not as threatening as, as it would be if, if it didn't have to worry about grass types and, and, uh, uh, safety goggles. But, uh, at the same time, you know, there's only, there's only so many grass types you're going to be going up against, and there's only one Pokemon on, on each team that can hold the safety goggles. So, uh, a lot of stuff is still going to be subject to its redirection and its sleep powder. The sleep powder, obviously the, the accuracy is a little bit risky, but, uh, um, if, uh, if you have some stuff that's, uh, susceptible to, to Tangela, especially, uh, especially the sleep powder, um, it's, uh, you're, you, you might just, you might be in for a bad day. Um, Azumarill, it's, uh, if, if you've been playing VGC for a while, you know what, what Azumarill's up to. Um, we haven't seen quite as much of it in, in this generation, a little bit, uh, in, in series five. I think it, it came back with the Isle of Armor, but, um, you know, uh, it's, uh, belly drum is, is kind of its bread and butter historically. Um, especially with the, uh, uh, the aqua jet belly huge drum, power. belly drum, aqua jet. We, yeah, with huge power is, uh, just, it's just kind of broken. Um, you can, but you can run it all kinds of different ways and it still does really big damage. I, anytime I saw an Azumarill in a VGC match, um, if it was, even if it wasn't running belly drum, which is, uh, a lot of the time it was running like a salt vest in, in VGC, I was still consistently surprised by how much damage it was doing when it dynamaxed. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's really, it's really surprising. You can even put a choice band on it if you want to, uh, you, you can run it all, all kinds of different ways. There's, you know, choice band, life orb, assault vest, citrus berry with belly drum. They're all viable sets and they're all very, very strong, very threatening. They have a, a huge amount of damage output. Um, Copperaja as well. It's it, it's we we picked it as well for for a, a good reason. It's uh, it's a very very powerful trick room sweeper that gets a lot of different coverage. Um, if if there's something that you need to hit super effectively, there's a good chance Copperaja can do it. Um, especially if you're if you're uh, Dynamaxing and you don't have to worry about like the accuracy on Power Whip and you don't have to worry about you know. Uh, heat crash. hitting it, yeah, hitting into a Dynamax Pokemon with Heat Crash or something like that. It's a really powerful Dynamax option. 
Uh, and max steel spike is is a, a, a very very good max move. Um, uh, Musharna is is it, it has a lot of potential to be really disruptive, especially if you want to run like gravity hypnosis stuff. Um, but uh, anything it wants to do in Trick Room to help support your team uh, is, is going to be pretty powerful, especially because it's just a little bit slower than those standard like 30 base speed Trick Room sweepers that, that you're going to see, like the Copper Raja. Um, so uh, really any, any Trick Room setter or Trick Room sweeper that's below that 30 base speed, uh, it has a certain type, a, a special kind of uh, threat to it. Haxorus, it just hits like a goddamn truck mm -hmm. like oh my god and i think with um uh, this is something i forgot to mention a little bit with the cinderace too the cinderace and the haxorus are even more threatening with the reggie Alecki on the field yeah. um because uh that that electro web is is such good speed control for pokemon that are already fast or kind of fast already you know um and and having uh having a a, a really having some reliable speed control like that next to Haxorus um, might actually allow you to run Swords Dance instead of Dragon Dance if you want to set it up. You don't, Maybe you don't need the speed boost because you're you're lowering your, your opponent's speed with Regieleki's super fast Electro Web. So you can just Swords Dance up. 147 base attack with a plus two is, is insane. And then especially on top of that, you can max it. Um, so I think Haxorus already is is incredibly threatening and e even more so on this team and then even kangaskhan um like i mentioned the way that uh scrappy fake out can throw a wrench into certain teams plans uh that's that's it's a unique kind of threat but uh you know i, I don't need to i don't need to go into it again but um it is it is threatening in its own unique uh kind of way that that uh nothing else is really able to do so Lots of really good threats. Uh, we uh, we we love how how threatening this this team is. It was it's it's fantastic. Uh, for versatility, we gave you a B. Um, there's a lot of versatility here in in a couple of ways, but the main way that we were really looking at is role switching. Uh, we think that you have a lot of ways to change up like coverage moves and things like that. But in our opinion, stuff like Regieleki. Um, it's throwing out electro webs. It's probably going to set up screens and, and it has a lot of electric stab. Like it's got pretty much any electric stab you want. It's there. <laughs> um, electro ball even with I've seen the helping hand, uh, electro balls, knock out dust clops, one shot, one, <laughs> yeah. just one shotting them, you know, so any electric stab you want, it's there, but it's more or less there for electro electric stab and screens. Um, Cinderace wants to go fast, change its stab. You know, hit things hard. Tangle is going to redirect stuff. Azumarill is where you have a lot of different versatility. Um, Musharna as well. Mm -hmm. But stuff like Copperaja, for the most part, is just, you know, getting in a trick room and plowing through things. Haxorus, same thing. Um, so, while I think, like, stuff like Copperaja, like Haxorus, like Cinderace, um, have a lot of versatility in their movesets to where like they don't have you know they have so much coverage that they can pretty much hit most of any team super effectively with uh, a lot of their coverage moves um their roles more or less will stay stagnant uh and i think that that's not necessarily a bad thing it's something that we uh we kind of just have been hitting not everybody but like it's it's hard to find that balance you know um we were talking to the boos this morning and they are the opposite of you guys where they have a lot of things that aren't so much defined role players or role setters, um, but they have a lot of things that can do a lot of diff, like more jack of all trades, master of none. You know, uh, they can, you know, be supportive in a decent way and they can also be offensive in a decent way, but they can't do either great. And I think you guys have a lot of things here that, you know, do a couple of things really really well you know and and up to like great like the copperaja uh like the cinderace like the haxorus like the reggie Alecki, like they just do their role so so well you know so um it's 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 hard versatility is is in general has been tough for for us to grade i think and for uh for teams to even draft because there is there is like a balance that needs to be struck a little bit that really gets that sweet spot um, of like being able to switch sets consistently 
and also switch uh, roles consistently, so, like not just coverage moves. So um, we ended up giving you a B in versatility, uh, but uh, we still it's not saying that this team is super static. There's still a lot of pieces here that can switch around, do what they need to do, and uh, and make themselves the optimal set for you guys to win the game on any given week. Um, <clears throat> so overall, that averaged out to uh, about a B plus. Yep. Uh, I think it's probably one of the higher B pluses. Yeah, we have. We'll we'll uh, we'll get confirmation of that uh, when we when we do our our power rankings. Uh, probably still tonight, right? Yes. Um, <coughs> but uh, that's that's kind of what I'm feeling at least uh, at, at the moment. It seems to be uh, one of the higher B pluses. Uh, we're gonna run through the pros and cons. Uh, pretty quick, a lot of this stuff we mentioned in our, our grades, so uh, don't want to repeat ourselves too much. But uh, uh, starting with the pros, you guys have a, a very robust trick room mode, um, especially with the, uh, the, the Kaparaja hitting 30 base speed is something we like to see. Uh, Musharna dipping just below 30 base speed is even nicer. Uh, and even the Azumarill, um, I, even though it's, it's 50 base speed, um, it's still going to work uh, pretty yes. well in Trick Room against a lot of different stuff. And it's especially nice because you're not relying on something that's uh, that's that kind of weird 50-ish speed. You know, exactly. you, can, you can get away with having a, uh, a Trick Room sweeper that's slow but not super slow like a Zoomerill if you also yep. have super slow stuff like the Musharna yes. and Kaparaja. Um, this is something we've been... Uh, We've been kind of hammering a lot of teams on their their trick room modes. Uh, they don't seem they either seem like they're not really all that fleshed out, or they don't have uh, a, a lot of good answers to to opposing trick room, or or maybe their trick room mode uh, just isn't slow and offensive enough um, to the point where they're going to get blown out of the water by slower trick room modes. Um, but uh, ones uh, uh, trick room modes like this, and like the one that uh, like doesn't click has with yep. the the aromatis and the uh, escavalier, um, these are the ones that that we really want to see. And I, I I understand we can't get that from everybody because there are eighteen teams and there's only so many uh, really powerful trick room sweepers. Um, but uh, it's it's definitely something that that we want to give you guys props for, and a lot of the reason that I think you you got the the uh, a. a trick room mode that's as high quality as this is is because you drafted it relatively early mm -hmm. um so that i that's oops that's a uh huge plus uh you you have a far better trick room mode than most i would say uh again very uh, strong type synergy um you guys have the firewater grass core and the uh uh fairy dragon steel core uh, between the uh, the Cinderace Tangle and Azumarill for Firewater Grass and the Azumarill, Kaparaja, and Haxorus for uh, Fairy and Steel and Dragon. Um, these are probably going to work pretty well together. Um, it's, uh, I mean, you, you kind of went through a lot of this in Synergy, so I don't want to repeat too much of what you said, but uh, I, I really like a lot of this stuff. I like that Azumarill and Kaparaja are able to work well together in Trick Room. Um, I like that uh, Tangle is able to redirect stuff from Cinderace, and you know, uh, who cares if the grass types are immune to it because Cinderace is just going to blow them up. There's there's a lot of good synergy here, and these uh, a lot of these Pokemon are, are very very powerful. The only member of uh, of this uh, either of these cores that isn't really much of an offensive powerhouse uh, is the Tangela. Um, Everything else is, is very good, including the Regieleki, if you want to add that to the Firewater Grass Core. We, we like to say that the an, an electric type is kind of the, the cherry on top for, for a, a good Firewater Grass Core, and uh, the, the Alecki works uh, really well with, with uh, especially the, the, the Cinderace. So. It's also why, and just so we can clear up, that they don't need to double up on the Grass types because they <laughs> have a way to deal with Water types. So typically yeah. we're, we've been... We've been hammering teams for getting like, oh, well, you got to support fire type, but that's not really a offensive fire type, so you want to fill it out a little bit more. You guys not having to grab a grass type is because you guys got that Regieleki that can still deal with bulky waters and things that your grass types typically like to deal with. So kudos to grab uh, for you guys on that one. Yeah. I, I'm wondering if you guys might have a little bit of trouble dealing with stuff like Seismitoad and, mm -hmm. and Swampert, yes. both of which got drafted. Um, but uh, I, I'm, I'm confident that the tools are, are here, so uh, it might not be too big of a deal. And Tangela can still uh, blow something up with a with a Leaf Storm anyway. So. Yeah. 
Um, let's see, especially if it's four times a week like that. So, mm, um, yeah. uh, your S tiers form a very uh, powerful offensive pair. This one's pretty straightforward. Something that uh, I think we touched on already. Uh, Reggie Galecki and Cinderace next to each other, really powerful. Um, the uh, Cinderace, if you Dynamax it with screens up, it's it's going to be surprisingly bulky. Uh, and it can still do the same amount of damage it always does. Uh, p- putting it next to a super, super fast um, uh, electro web can actually make it outspeed uh, even things that are uh, are faster than it. Um, if you're going up against like an Inteleon or something, uh, or uh, Barrascuta is is uh, uh, got drafted as well. Although it is it is in uh, it is on a rain team, so that might be a little bit trickier. But um, Scarf Reggie Alecki. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. Um, I actually have no idea if that would be faster than a Swift Swim Barrascuta because Barrascuta is incredibly yeah, fast too. Like, yeah. I'd have to I'd have to check on that. I actually have no idea, but because um, who the hell does like? <laughs> if you're going against Barrascuta in ring, yeah. you might as well throw a scarf on Reggie Alecki. Only in draft league. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it could also allow you to run like a a slower, bulkier, adamant Cinderace too. Um, Mm -hmm. so I, there's a lot of potential in these two S tiers and I, I do, I do like them together. Uh, it's a very good offensive pair. Uh, and again, you have very capable role fillers with good type coverage, uh, mainly offensive role fillers, but the tangle is there too, uh, doing its job as well. Like, uh, but the, yeah, you have, you have good coverage, uh, not so much with the Reggie Alecki cause it's just throwing out electric types, but, uh, uh, Cinderace has good coverage, um, it's it's not going to be hitting everything for super effective damage, but you have your choice of uh, uh, several different moves that it can use, and and it'll use them very very well. Uh, Haxorus has pretty good coverage, uh, like you said, it gets uh, it gets both uh, steel and and ground coverage. Uh, it gets a, f- a few more things, maybe like bug. I think it gets poison, uh, rock, uh, may- maybe a few more things. I'm it's not good coverage. Yeah. I'm not super familiar with Haxor's coverage uh, right off the top of my head, but uh, I am familiar with Copperage's coverage, and that thing gets a lot of coverage. It gets, you know, uh, uh, Heat Crash and Play Rough, uh, oh, yeah. high, high Horsepower, Power Whip, Super Power, uh, Rock Slide. It gets, uh, it gets a lot of really surprising coverage, and uh, uh, it's, it's a great, great Trick Room Sweeper. Um, the thing about having really, really good roll fillers like this is... Uh, they might be a little bit static in what they want to do, but they're at least doing that thing that they want to do very well. It's kind of a double-edged sword. Uh, one, one of the things that uh, that you'll touch on uh, here here in the cons as well. Yeah, so uh, in the cons, you know, no follow me with only Rage Powder. Uh, Tangle is an excellent redirector. Um, I think that it's probably only flaw is that it has Rage Powder instead of follow me. Uh, we've kind of hammered on some teams for not having multiple redirectors, but this one's a little, for a little bit different of a reason. Uh, for instance, you know, we talked to other teams about having things like Blastoise without having another redirector, like, um, the drillers, we're going to be talking to them soon. And that pigeon holds them into only bringing Blastoise as a redirector. And Tangela wants to be a redirector most of the time. But the issue is, is that stuff like safety goggles, stuff like, you know, gr- grass types are going to be able to get their, uh, make their way around the redirection entirely. So seeing you guys patch that up with a follow me user would have been nice, especially considering that you guys drafted it third in, in the third round when uh, last season, I believe it went undrafted and you guys were able to pick it up off the free agency wire. So uh, when you have things like Mr. Mime, Togetic, Electivire, Electi- uh, Magmortar that are still on the board in the same tier that are follow high tier follow me users, um, it would have been nice to see uh, one of those go. Even if you guys were going to pick up the Tangela later on, I still think it's a fantastic pick. And I believe I, t- I said earlier that uh, I do think that Tangela is uh, probably the best choice for a primary redirector on this team. But just giving it some help with the follow me user would have been nice. Um, and then uh, while you guys do have a, a lot of very good attackers, they tend to be a little bit on the frail end. Um, Reggie Alecki, Cinderace... Kaparaja, these are all Pokemon that are weak to ground, and they don't really want to switch into any ground-type attacks. Now, Kaparaja and Cinderace can get themselves bulky enough through Dynamax to where they're not going to mind a stray ground attack every now and then, but I'm more talking about defensive synergy, especially with the Cinderace, where its defensive synergy on a turn-by-turn basis can change depending on the, the speed that it's at, 
what Mon is moving before it and what's in its move pool. So it's a little bit tougher to be like, oh, well, it's weak to this all the time. Like, no, it's it's typing changes fluidly. So it's a lot easier for me to kind of just talk about it as defensive switching. Um, none of these want to switch into a straight earth power. None of them, you know. Uh, so I think that can be something that is is worth saying. Like, there there's some frailty here. Azumarill is probably on the bulkier end of things, but stuff like Haxorus, um, you know, the... All of these other ones, Copperage, Reggie, Lucky, Cinderace, they're just, they're, they're not really designed to take a lot of hits at a time. Um, I do like the Tangela, and I think the Tangela is, is bulky enough to keep you guys safe from a lot of things. Uh, Musharna obviously has a decent amount of bulk as well. Um, that, you know, base 116 HP with 85, 95 in the defenses. Uh, I think it, it's it's decently bulky. But um, your attackers mostly are what we're worried about it, as far as being on the frail end. Um that uh, I think it needs to be checked, but who knows? I think when you have things like Regieleki to set up screens and mitigate damage, as, as well as the Tangela, you know, I think you have workable tools. One one more thing on the on the frailty. I'm <clears throat> I'm not uh, I'm not familiar with exactly how you and Tofu build your your spread, so I'm not necessarily talking to you guys on this. But uh, Kaparaja actually has potential to be kind of frail. Uh, mm -hmm. if you don't build it right, mm -hmm. um, there's, there, there's a, it, these Pokemon are not very common, but anything, uh, just, just for any, anybody, uh, watching who's not aware of this, anything that has a very high base HP stat and low base defenses, you want to invest in the defenses for more bulk. You want to use your, your EVs efficiently, uh, by, by boosting those, uh, those lower defenses instead of putting your, your EVs in HP. Um, don't, don't ever, I, I don't ever want to see a Pokemon like Copperaja or, or Driftblim or, or, you know, Guzzlord. I don't think anybody drafted Guzzlord, but that, that kind of Pokemon with high HP and low defenses, I don't ever want to see max HP investment on those things. Yeah, you don't need it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, any, anybody with a Pokemon like that, just, just letting you know that's how you build it. Invest in the in the defenses, not the HP. Otherwise, it's going to be way more frail than it otherwise would yes, be. Just throwing exactly. that out there. Yeah, that's something that we saw. That we're not sure it, what the patch has. I I trust Cleffy's building ability. Oh, Cleffy definitely Alex, knows. You know, but um, the Copperaja in particular, like, uh, there was one match where they had Runarigas on the field. It was already in Trick Room. They bulldozed and they switched the Copperaja in, and it did like thirty five percent. You know, so it's still, it, it you know, it has frail-ish defenses, but with the with the Dynamax, they can be bulky. So that's kind of why I wanted to to mention that as well. But yeah, uh, Copperage is definitely one of those Pokemon. I think Musharn, eh, Musharn has good defenses, 85, 95. You can, you can still put a lot into the HP there. They're not so low as as the Copperage here. Yeah, it's not quite so dramatic. Yeah, exactly. I'd, ha I'd have to play around with the EVs to figure out where, where the, uh, uh, how how to invest in that more efficiently but uh it's not it's not quite so obvious as it is with copperaja yeah um next uh next con just real quick um you have very strong modes uh but they tend to be a little bit linear in my opinion um you're gonna i think this this probably reminds me the most of uh the russian assets last year i know we talked about another team like that but the, it's like on the very high end of the speed spectrum and then on the very low end of the speed spectrum you guys are at um, so like, there's not going to be any times, I don't think where you guys are running Copperaja next to Regieleki and going for max speed Copperaja and, uh, shooting out electro webs, you know, um, there, those, that's probably not going to be happening a lot. Maybe every now and then, maybe once, I'm not going to say it's, it's impossible, you know, <laughs> but, uh, it's, it's just typically you're going to have the Haxorus or the Cinderace that are taking advantage of that. Maybe even the zoom roll if you want to try and build it correctly and make it uh, like bulky with Dynamax, you know, you can do stuff like that. But um, you, while your modes are very strong and very oppressive when you are able to, uh, to pull them off properly, a lot of them are a little bit linear and could be prepped for. And uh, pr probably the biggest issue with Cinderace is that its most powerful mode is when it, right when it shows up and it's on the field and is immediately threatening Dynamax and you need to figure out what it's going to do. Um, so 
it, it I don't know it does okay as like a mid game Dynamax option, but it's I think it's most threatening in the in the beginning, and teams know that, so they'll prep hard for stuff like that. And I think uh, I think it's just worth noting that you know you're you you could be forced a little bit into more linear play. Um, obviously, it depends on the builders and the the coaches. Um, so you guys you know, might be all be all right with that, but it's definitely something to consider just in general. And um, the lack of mode switching in individual Pokemon kind of goes into the same thing in this. Uh, Musharna is not going to be a, a Tailwind sweeper. You know, it's setting up Trick Room. It's doing, you know, whatever it needs to do. Haxorus uh, isn't going to drop its speed so low that, you know, you're going to be usable in, in Trick Room. I mean, I guess it could, but, but you know, there's it's just, it's just a, a lot of things that, like I said, are very good, but a little bit more linear. So... Not, not that it's necessarily a bad thing. I think you guys filled out your roles uh, pretty well in this draft. Overall, is very, very balanced. But uh, just stuff that we noticed uh, when we were when we were looking over the draft. Um, so that finishes off uh, our uh, <clears throat> report card section. We're going to ask you guys a few questions uh, really quickly. The first one, we talked about it a little bit in the beginning. Uh, we felt that Reggie Alecki, while it is a very solid S tier, and we think that it definitely fits well on the team, um, it was a little bit early to grab it. I believe you guys were the fifth overall pick. Uh, to grab it fifth overall, um, I felt that something like a, a G Max Cinderace might even been good in that slot instead of the regular Cinderace. Um, and there were a lot of good S tiers that were there as well, like the Togekiss, the Tapu Fini. Um, what w what in particular was your reason for going with the Reggie Alecki? Yeah, we did feel like Reggie Alecki was you know, the thing that we wanted to build around the most out of all our S tiers. And we felt like he was the most versatile mon of the of the mons in the move pool, in the in the pool. So uh, we did feel like Regiello he was the way to go. Um, we also weren't worried about losing G Max in the race. Um, Tingla has chlorophyll, so we were like, you know, if we get normal in the race, like who knows, we might be able to set up sun or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we did feel like Regiello he was just um, was just the best way to go because you know you can you can use Magnet, Choice Scarf, Choice Specs, you know, uh, or you can use Light Clay, Focus Sash. Um, for a more supportive set, so. Okay, yeah, that honestly makes a lot of sense to me, and, and going for the regular Cinderace definitely makes sense as well. Um, we gave you guys a lot of credit for the Trick Room mode and why you guys went for it early. What's the story behind getting that Trick Room mode so early? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, last year with, with our run, we felt like Trick Room was the glue to our team, right? So we wanted something similar like last time, right? Uh, a slower Trick Room on, a good Trick Room setter, uh, redirection and it's something that that's also a little bit faster right last year we we got a little in Marowak um, mm -hmm. in one of our trades and so having something like a zoom reel that you know can actually be pretty fast when it's times two um, we felt like that was you know we felt like that was the glue to our team mm -hmm. so that's why we just felt like you know uh, that that trick room was so important yeah definitely big credit for uh, for grabbing that stuff because honestly I think Matt hit on it pretty well there uh, Things that have a base 50 speed or base 45 speed or however, they excel a lot more when you have more capable Trick Room abusers on your team. So you having Kaparaja plus Musharna really just allow that Azumarill to just... You guys ran Jolly Marowak a lot last season, a few times, mm -hmm. and uh, it proved to be very, very good for you. Um, I think I could see you guys doing the same thing with Azumarill this year. And it gives you a lot of flexibility, particularly in that slot. So I, I really like the trick room mode on this on this team. Um, next question is, uh, why the early Rage Powder um, with the Tangela? Why not try and grab something like a Follow Me? We understand the Tangela is good there. But why no Follow Me later on in the draft? Yeah, so the two reasons I think are really important is that it's just first off the Firewater Grass Core, right? Um, we felt like it was a really good addition and we really liked it. And the second reason is we just really liked it last year, right? We are incredibly comfortable with Tangela. We know a lot of its sets. Um, it's something that we started to discover more as we uh, later on in the season. So we just felt like, you know, why not why not get a mom like Tangela? It was our MVP for like three or four matches last year. So um, we, we just felt like it was, you know, we felt it was better than any uh, Follow Me user. Definitely. It's also just a comfort pick, yeah. you know. Comfort picks are also really good, I think. Yeah. You, you just, there's a lot to be said for understanding on how to build a Pokemon on a week-to-week -week basis and what tools you have with it. So, and, I, and like we said before, I do think 
it, uh, even if you were to have something like a Mr. Mime or, uh, you know, anything like that, I would say still Tangela is going to be one of the, the main redirectors that you're going to have on your team because it synergizes so well with so many things. So overall, uh, <clears throat> I like, I like the pick. I just wish, uh, I would just wish Tangela would have got a little bit of help. That's it. Um, so real quick, we're going to ask you three quick questions since it's just you. It won't take too long. Um, the first question is uh, Pokemon that you drafted that you're excited to use. Definitely Haxorus. Um, I I top cut a Mount Silver with Haxorus before. Love Haxorus, one of my favorite Mons. Um, in, in that top top cut specifically, I used it with uh, with some other Mons on this team, and so I I'm really comfortable with it, and I think I think it has a ton of potential. So I I like how you guys sit on Haxorus, um, Haxorus Eliki. I think. I think it's going to be a great mod this season. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what's an underrated Pokemon that you guys have on your team that the league is overlooking? I definitely feel like Azumarill and Drizzile. Um, Azumarill hasn't seen a lot of play recently in VGC. Um, in a lot of the drafts I've been in, I haven't seen it really been uh, really be picked or anything like that. But I think it's incredibly strong, even in something like a really boom format, as we do have Staff Stipper. Um, I think it's I think it's a great pick and a bit of a group pick even for some of our team. It has some supportive tools that are really good. I I really think that it's it's an underrated mon and I'm excited to use it. The other one, Drizzile. Uh, we have some really cool stuff for Drizzile, so um, we're kind of excited to show that as as the season goes on. But I definitely think Drizzile is, is going to show up. Cool. It should be exciting to see, honestly. What's your guys' expectations this season? For those who don't know, I don't think we mentioned it. You guys are the Toronto Talon Flames from last season. Um, you guys made it to the top four. Uh, what are your guys' expectations? Yeah, I think we're in it to win it. Um, last year, we were we were, have, we were here to have fun. Um, we weren't sure we were going to make playoffs. We never really thought we would. Um, making it to top four even was a surprise. And I think that, you know, I really want to make finals. And if we make finals, you know, I, I feel like we can go the whole way. So definitely in it to win it. Um, I really want to take the season. Another thing is I want to beat all the teams we lost to last season. Um, <laughs> the three teams that we lost to last season are all in our schedule. So I want to beat the Mudkips. I want to beat the seniors this week. I um, want to win the best of three versus doesn't click. Um, so those are, those are my two goals. All right. Sounds good. I think, um, yeah, I, I was something I was surprised by last season was how surprised you guys seemed to be about your own success. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you guys, you guys seemed surprised that you were winning a lot and that you made playoffs and that you made top four. And, and I was, I was kind of watching you guys play the whole season. I'm like, what, like, wh why, why does it seem so weird that you guys are doing well? You have a really good team. You're playing well. Yeah. Like, it makes sense to me. So I think I think uh, that that answer you just gave that you said you're you're in it to win it. You want to beat all the teams that beat you last time. I think you you guys that it it sounds like you have more a, a better sense of of uh, mm -hmm. how good you guys actually are, and that's that's good to see. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, that wraps it up from our end. Did you have any final thoughts? Anything else that you wanted to say? Not really. I mean, thank you guys for having me on. This was a uh, this was cool. No problem, man. Thanks for coming on. And uh, yeah, pretty much done here. Can't wait to see your, how you guys do with your team. Uh, you know, Hopefully you guys make it further, make it into the finals. And who knows, maybe we'll see you there, man. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right, buddy. Take Good luck care, this man. season. Peace.